Hi, so this video we are going to talk about the com computer simulation and layout of a CMOS op amp with NMOS input stage. So this is the basic structure of an op amp. This op amp is consists of three basic parts which are differential amplifier, common source amplifier and also biasing circuit. This part is, is differential amplifier, which consists of M1, M2, M3, M4, and also M5. Differential amplifier can give the op amp an, a high gain, and it is immune to environment noise. For common source amplifier, this is the part for common source amplifier. It consists of M6, M7, and capacitors. Common source amplifier will give the op amp a maximum output voltage swing. And then for this compensation capacitor, it will lower the gain at high frequency and it will maintain the stability when the recitive negative feedback is applied to the op amp. For the biasing circuit, which include uh, M8, M5, M7 and the current source, it will establish an operating point for all transistors to operate at its uh, saturation region. So now we are going to talk about the calculation, how we design an op amp. We are using a 130 nanometer technology. And then these are the parameters that we, are, we extract from the uh, data sheet. This is the conducting, conducting parameter for NMOS and this is the conducting parameter for PMOS. This is the op -amp design specification that is given in the assignment. The supply voltage is one, uh, plus minus 1.2 volt and the bias current is 150 microampere. The, load capacitance is 200 and so on. So next, we are going to design the expect ratio for each transistors. As you can see, the phase margin specification is 60 degree. And then the compensation capacitor, we can get it from this equation. And then finally, we get a 44 picofarad uh, compensation capacitor. And then, uh, the current flow through the M5 is uh, determined by the through rate. So, as you can see, the equation I5 equal to through rate times the cap compensation capacitor. And then, we get 30 microampere. Next, the M1 and M2 is designed from the unity gain bandwidth and the small signal trans transconductance from gate to channel. So, and also from the equation, we, we get GM1 equal to 414.69 micro uh, cement. And then finally, we get an uh, expert ratio for M1 and M2 equal to 7.24, which is approximate uh, 7. And next, the total output swing will be more than 2 times with uh, bracket VDD minus V overdrive 6 minus V overdrive 7. And then so, uh, following uh, the calculation, finally we will get V out max equal to 1 volt and V out minimum equal to negative 1 volt. This, this is the uh, total output swing. So step number 6. We want the input common mode voltage range is more than 1.6 volt. And therefore, we let the V in max equal to VDD minus VGS3 minus VT1. So we will get 0 0.8 watt and V minimum we will get negative 0 0.8 watt. And, and then how we design M3 and M4? We design it from the maximum input common mode voltage voltage range, which is uh, Win max minus uh, equal to VDD minus uh, these equations. 
and then finally we will get uh, 8.44 which is approximately to 8 for M5 M5 is designed from the minimum input common mode voltage range we in minimum and and also from the equations we will get it is approximately to 4 this is the M6 parameters M6 uh, from GM4 we will get GM4 equal to 292.01 micro cement and then for a 60 degree phase margin we know that GM6 is more than 10 GM1 so we since we already get get a uh, GM1 so we just times GM1 with 10 so we will get this answer and then uh, by assume GM6 equal to this value and then GM4 is equal to this value and then we can calculate the expect ratio for M6 which is approximately 536 for M7 is actually the same from uh, the last one this is the equation for I6 and then to balance it I7 must be equal to I6 so I7 is equal to 1 milli ampere so we will get the expert ratio for M7 is 133 for M8 it is, de is designed from the M5 so the expert ratio for M M8 is equal to 20 and then next uh, the equation must be satisfied for balance condition so finally what we get uh, this one is approximately to 66.5 so it is satisfied That's, that means our calculation is correct uh, lastly to calculate the open loop voltage gain AV for the first stage gain AV1 is equal to GM1 over GDS2 plus GDS4 so we will get 37.87 second stage is GM6 over GDS6 plus GDS7 so we get 26.78 so the total one is AV1 times AV2 so finally we get uh, then we convert it to decibel which is 60.112 decibel so this is the uh, summary table of the expiration of each transistor this is the expiration that we, we have calculated and length is fixed because we are using uh, 0.13 micrometer technology so by calculation we can get the width of each transistor so we are using this expiration to design the schematic using the computer tool Now we will verify our design using the mental graphics EDA tools. First of all, we will run through the DC operating point and AC simulation. This show that we run the DC OP and AC simulations. After we run through the DC OP simulation, it shows that all the transistor operating in the saturation in order for amplify the input signal and after we run through the AC simulation it will come up with the frequency the graph for the frequency response for the op amp that we design from here it shows that our gain is 60 dB which is equal to 1000 gain uh, now we need to verify the phase margin for this curve so we click this one so from the curve it shows that our phase margin is 68 degree and the unity gain bandwidth is about 3.43 megahertz after that we will 
run through the steel red simulation. So in the during the steel red simulation, we need to use the pulse signal and the inverting input is connecting to the output. So after we run through the simulation, this is the curve for to determine the steel rate. So now we need to find the steel rate for the output. So from here we can see that the steel rate for this output is equal to 570k per second which is equal to 0 0.57 volt per microsecond and it satisfies our specs which is equal to 0 0.5 volt per microsecond next we will run through the output string simulation so after we run through the output string simulation from here we can see that this is the non-inverting input and this is the uh, output signal so from here we can see the peak to peak value for the input voltage signal is 2 millivolt while the output signal is 2.02 volt so when the output value is divided by the input value so the gain is about 1000 which is equal to 60 dB this shows that it satisfies our design specification after that we will run through the input common mode or test range simulation and this is the result that we get so at here we can see that the current at M5 is almost constant so the result that we get for the minimum input common mode voltage, voltage is negative 0.8 volt while the maximum input common mode voltage is 0.8 volt lastly we will run through the differential output voltage string simulation so from here we can see that when we apply a very very small input signal so we will have a very large output voltage string for the differential now we will compare the result between the calculation and the simulation for the open loop voltage gain the calculated value is 1000 which is equal to 60 dB while the simulated value is 1065 which is equal to 60.55 dB for the unity gain bandwidth the calculated value is 1.5 MHz while the simulated value is 3.5 MHz for the phase margin the calculated value is 60 degree while the simulated value is 65.03 degree for the steel rate the calculated value is 0.5 volt per microsecond while the simulated value is 0.53 volt per microsecond for the input common mode voltage range the calculated and simulated value is the same which is from negative 0.8 volt to 0.8 volt for the output voltage swing the simulated value is same as the calculated value which is from negative 1 volt to 1 volt for the compensation capacitor the calculated value is same with the simulated value which is 44 picofarad this is the layout for the design of M so for the input stage we drawing the layout by using the common centroid method the common centroid layout is generally used with 
differential pair. It is a matching method in which the two transistors of the different pair are symmetrically laid out about a certain axis. This guarantees that both transistors see the same process variation, so they should be matched under all conditions. After the simulation has been drawn, we will run through the DLC, LVS and PEX process so that the layout that we draw is compatible with the process technology and exactly same as the schematic. In conclusion, the design to stash CMOS OM operate at plus minus 1.2 watt power supply. For the parameter that we gain from the simulation, the gain is 60.55 dB which is 1065. For the unity gain bandwidth, it is 3.5 MHz. The compensation capacitor that we use in the simulation is the 44 picofarad and the load capacitor that we use is 200 picofarad. The phase margin obtained from the simulation is 65.03 degree. For the input common mode voltage range we obtain from the simulation, it is from negative 0.8 volt to 0.8 volt. For the output voltage string obtained from the simulation, it is from negative 1 volt to 1 volt. The output steel rate obtained from the simulation is 0.53 volt per microsecond. That's all. Thank you.